In order to understand how we run, it is always better to have a model or an example of how, how good runners really run. And just like we do this in golf and we do this in other sports, is we have the ability to model ourselves on other individuals. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to talk a little bit more about how the running motion actually works. And the best way to start that off with, is with the mathematical equation of how running is. Running is basically your stride length, the, the amount of distance that you cover with one step, and your stride rate, which is the number of the steps that you take in a minute. And this is normally measured as a stride cycle from left foot to left foot, but a lot of times we also just talk about just how many steps we take with our left foot in a minute or our right foot in a minute. And so what that brings to our training when we start understanding it's not only about the speed that we're covering and what our central physiological systems are doing, but it's also very, very much about if we are training, we have to take cognizance when we fractionalize training, we have to take cognizance of the stride rate that we have and the stride length that we have. Let's say, for example, we're going to run a 10 kilometer, all right, and we're going to do 400 meter repeats to run that 10 kilometer. It's no good taking super long, powerful, s slow strides in that 10 by 400 meter workout and then trying to take that to the road and running a 10 kilometer on the road where we're going to be taking a lot less, uh, a lot more steps with a lot shorter stride length because then there's no neuromuscular carryover. So that's a very, very important thing for us to look at. Let's have a look at some key perspectives that we need to have as background to understand how the running motion works. And so the first thing that we look at is our kinetic chain. And the kinetic chain is the contralateral way in which we run, all right? In other words, the right shoulder works together with the left hip, the right elbow works together with the left knee, and the right wrist works together with the left ankle. And those work in unison. When I coached the Olympic champion in 1996 in the Olympic Games in Atlanta, he used to have a funny little rotation with his forearm. But if you look further down the chain, his left foot overpronated, and that was echoed by the movement of his wrist. So that's, that's a real key component to look at when you're looking at your own mechanics, is to make sure that that kinetic chain is operating intact. The next thing that we'll look at is um, that people tend to view running as linear, all right, as, as straight line movements. But even if you look at it, me from the front here, if I move my arms forward in this fashion, my right arm forward, my left arm back, you'll notice that my sho shoulder is narrow. So it's very important that you view your own running in three dimensions. That it's not just what's going on left and right and what's going on forward and back, but all of the angles through that. We call that multi-planar movement, and running is a very multi-planar movement. So when you look at your footprints, they don't echo the width of your feet that is equal to the width of your hips when you start running. So that's an important concept. The next thing to look at is, is a, a concept called the, the, the differentiation between sports that are ipsilateral and sports that are contralateral. Now, ipsilateral sports indicate that the one side of the body moves at the same time. For example, when you're swimming, when you put your hand in the water, this shoulder would move forward, this hip would drop down, you would rotate in the water, and your entire right side would move at the same time. As opposed to running or throwing uh, motions, it's a contralateral movement. As we spoke about this kinetic chain working contralaterally, when you run, you run contralaterally. In other words, torque the body so that the arm goes forward and goes straight back, but the way it achieves that is through a rotational movement. All right, so that's, that's a, a very, very important thing to, to view. And when we analyze our own running, we very often look at a single movement, but you know, a, a running movement is a cyclic movement. In other words, it's a rotational movement around axes. All right, and that's how we produce linear motion. So if you put a, a strobe light or something on your ankle or on your knee, on your hip, you'd notice that it would be moving forward in, in cyclum, uh, uh, cyclic motion. So that, that's very important. A key factor in running efficiency is a concept called dynamic balance. And dynamic balance statically is actually being imbalanced. We want to create a situation where we have an upright body and we're trying to turn that body into a wheel. I often tell runners that when you run downhill and you want to use gravity and free speed to get you down that hill, 
you're basically a box and the more you can shave off the corners of that box, the more likely you will be able to have less resistance as you roll. And so how I explain dynamic balance is to have people stand in a position where they are upright, they're not bending at the waist, they're not bending at the chest, all right? And if I dropped a plumb line from my shoulders, that would hang ahead of my hips. And if I dropped a plumb line from my hips, they'd hang ahead of my, of my toes or just in the middle of my feet, all right? But what they are doing is they are leaning slightly forward and all that's holding me up and stopping me from falling forward is the pressure that my calf muscles are putting through my ankles, pushing my feet to the ground. All right, and then as soon as I let go, I create forward momentum. So that's a very, very important concept, and it gets highly impacted by fatigue. So the more tired we become, the more upright we are, the more we want to keep ourselves in balance and safe, and the harder we actually have to work to overcome inertia. What's very important when we're talking about dynamic balance is the fact that when we are out of balance when we are running, it causes our legs to react to our postural position, our, our out of balance position, and it then becomes a different movement pattern. In other words, our legs come out in front of us to stop us from falling and to protect us and to keep us safe. And when you elicit that kind of reaction, it's a much, much more efficient, much more primal, much more useful way to approach the run. So just creating that slight imbalance is, is a very key concept.